Hello, it's the Math Lady, and today we're going to talk about variables. Variables. Yes, that day in math when they start introducing letters into your math. It's a bit scary at first, but it doesn't have to be. We're going to talk about why that is. Ah! It's having problems. There it goes. Okay. The most common variable, the one you see all the time, is x. Dun, 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 x. Always with the x. You'll start seeing things like 3x plus 5 equals 11. Solve for x. This is very common and in pre-algebra and algebra these sort of uh, equations and problems come up all the time. So what is a variable? A variable is a mathematical way of saying, I don't know what goes here. Really, that's it. I don't know what number goes here. So I'm going to put an X and then I'll try to figure out what number goes there. It's like I have a blank. If I said, what number plus two equals five? I bet you could answer that. You say, well, I know what that is. Three plus two equals five. Another way of writing that would be x plus 2 equals 5. It's the same thing. It's saying, hmm, what number plus 2 equals 5? And you just solve for x. Now with this, because I know that you know 3 plus 2 equals 5, you can do that in your head. But once it starts getting more complicated with more numbers and more things happening, Doing it in our head is not really an option. So we have to find ways to be able to solve for X. That's our magic phrase, solve for X. Here's the thing with algebra. Algebra is like a balance beam, or I guess they don't really have these anymore, but we call it like a teeter-totter. Things have to stay balanced. If I have a 10 pound weight on this side of the teeter-totter, it's going to whoop, go down if there's nothing on the other side. However, if I have a 10 pound weight on the other side, it is balanced. It stays perfectly level. That's what we want in our algebraic equations. And this is why, because we have this equal sign. It's saying things on the left and things on the right are exactly the same. Just like up here, 10 pounds on the left, 10 pounds on the right. It's the same and it has to stay that way. Now, if I look at my little teeter-totter, if I added five pounds on the left, ah, it's going to fall over. Unless I also added five pounds on the right. If I do that, it's okay. It's still balanced. It's the same. If I took away two pounds from the left. I said, nope, now it's eight. I'm taking away two pounds. It's fine as long as I also take away two pounds from the left. I'm sorry, from the right. <laughs> so that's what we're going to be doing in algebra. Whatever we do to the left, we also do to the right. As long as we keep that in mind and are very, um, are very determined to do that and always do that, will be fine. We can do anything as long as we do it the same to both sides. So let's look at our x plus 2 equals 5. Again, I know you can do that in your head, but let's just pretend that we didn't know how to do that in our head. How could we undo what's been done to x and figure out what it is? Well, here's my x. What's been done to it? 2 has been added to it. What's the opposite of adding? Subtracting. So I'm going to subtract 2 to undo what's been done. But remember, it's a teeter-totter. We got to keep it the same on both sides. So I'm going to subtract 2 from the other side as well. If I added 2 and then subtracted 2, it's undone. I just have an x now. Then 5 minus 2 is 3. x equals 3. 
to show a real number example that this plus 2 minus 2 undoes it, what if I had 10 plus 2 minus 2? What does that equal? Well, let's do it step by step. 10 plus 2 is 12. 12 minus 2 is 10. Hey, plus 2 minus 2, it's undone, and I am left with just 10. Okay, so now let's make things a little more difficult. Whoa, it's my little evil laugh. Not a great evil laugh. I'll have to work on it. So let's say, what if I had 3x equals 9? Well, this is the same as saying I have 3 x's or 3 times x. And if you're not familiar with this, if you're new to this sort of uh, writing, because we're using x's as variables, we stop using them to mean times because that would be very confusing, right? To have 3 times x, you're like, wait, is that 3xx or 3 times x? So we'll start using dots to mean times, and that's why. We didn't just get tired of the time sign. It's a, there's a real reason for it. So 3x means 3 times x, or x plus x plus x. Okay, so 3 times x. Back, 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 back up. 3 times x equals 9. So what's been done to x? It's been multiplied by 3. What's the opposite of multiplying? Dividing. So I'm going to divide both sides by 3. And I'm going to write it like this. If you want to write it like this to begin with, there's nothing wrong with that. But I would suggest getting in the habit of writing it as underlined in 3. When you get to more complicated things, it will help you immensely. Believe me. So let's just get in the habit of doing that. So x times 3 divided by 3. Whoop, those 3's are now gone. It's just x. And on this side, 9 divided by 3 is 3. And if we test that out by plugging it in for x, 3 times 3 equals 9. Is that true? Why, yes, it is. OK, now let's combine those two concepts. What if I had 3x plus 4? equals 19. That's a little harder just to do in our heads. So let's take it step by step and see what happened to x and how we can undo it. Well, x was multiplied by 3 and then 4 was added. So we're going to undo those in the reverse order. So x was multiplied by 3 and then 4 was added. So let's undo those. First, let's undo the plus 4. Opposite of plus is minus. So I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides because it's a teeter-totter. And I am left with 3x on the left because plus 4 minus 4, boop, boop, that's gone now. Actually, let's go do, do, do like that. <laughs> and 19 minus 4 is 15. So now what happened next to x or what happened first? It was 3 times x, so I'm going to undo that, do the opposite by dividing by 3. x times 3 divided by 3 is now just x, and 15 divided by 3 is 5. So now I know that x is 5. And there is a basic introduction to variables and how we can use them to solve simple equations. If you like this video, please feel free to enjoy some of our other mathematical videos. We have them on a whole bunch of different topics. And please like and subscribe for more videos. We try to put them out pretty regularly. Hope you have a great day. This is from the Math Lady. Bye-bye.